Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jack and Mo Cooking Show, where we've got an easy meal for working families on the go. You might notice that I'm not wearing my signature Jack and Mo ball cap. In fact, you might notice that I'm wearing my Irish tweed cap. This cap was made in Ireland, but I bought it in Wales over 20 years ago. And it's holding up pretty good. As a matter of fact, it's holding up better than I am. So, what we're making today, what we're going to do today, in addition to wearing my cap, I'm also wearing my green shirt. So what does that tell you? One week from today is St. Patrick's Day. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a dish called Coke Cannon, which is basically Irish mashed potatoes. But I'm going to do it my way. No, I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to do it my way. It's going to call you Mr. Sinatra to you. Yeah, no, this is not uh, Jack and Mo karaoke. This is Jack and Mo cooking show. It would be O Sinatra too, wouldn't it? Yeah. We get in the spirit. So what I've done is I have peeled and chopped and boiled about eight russet potatoes. And now I'm mashing them. And I'm having a smashing good time while I'm doing it. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some butter, an entire stick of butter. That's real butter too, right? Yep. Okay. I On can't believe it's real stuff. butter. Okay. Now we're going to take our handy dandy handy mixer. Say that three times fast. Oh, if I can get this guy to hang out. Stay. And this big a time for a safety tip of don't mix the potatoes with the cordon. Oh yeah. With it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Got to cut the cord. It was a mistake, but I let you keep going with it. Yep. It happens. We should tell our viewers not to. Not to. Because you know someone's going to do it. Okay, now we're going to put in some cream cheese. An entire brick of cream cheese. Is that cold or did you have to warm it up? The cream cheese? Room yeah. temperature. Room temperature. Yep. It says St. Patrick's Day, other than corned beef, more than potatoes. Guinness. Yeah, you know, that's true. <laughs> I guess we could have done that. Okay. For Guinness and the potatoes? Yeah. That was probably a recipe for it. Now we're going to put in an entire cup of sour cream. Did you eat a lot of mashed potatoes growing up, Mike? No. Oh, we have these all the time. Was that one cup? Was that eight ounces, or was yep. that one? That was just like one container. One container. Okay. Um, eight ounces. All right. You got it. Well, growing up, we ate a lot of mashed potatoes. Okay, so now we're gonna add in. Gonna add some mashed potatoes back in. We're going to add in some uh, green onions. There's just a bunch of green onions I bought in the produce department and I chopped them up. And we're going to add some parsley. Chopped parsley. Okay. I'm sure you could find it. someone named Stan who will mix for you. Yeah. Wow, that I was a really that was bad coming. joke. I just knew that was coming. Ah, you know me too well. Okay. So, we're going to try to transfer these potatoes over to our casserole dish, and I just might need a helping hand from Mr. Mike. Want me to help you? 
You, well, maybe you could just reach out and hold this, hold the casserole dish for me. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like I'm gonna make a big mess if I don't start out like this. <laughs> You know what I'm missing, Mike? I'm missing my bachelor. Oh. I might have to run over to the counter and grab it real quick. You can grab it when you put those in the oven. Well, I need them before I put it. Put need it before I put it in the oven. Right, so now we're gonna try and do it like this. So what we do is we transfer these over and then we're going to spread them out to look nice. Alright, now we uh, one last thing to do to our potatoes and they go in the oven and they would go in for about 20 minutes or so at 450 but we're going to explain things for the sake of time in our video. Okay, so these are just uh, panko breadcrumbs. Seasoned or unseasoned? Unseasoned. Now the great thing about this recipe is it's so versatile. I can make this just like this and put it in the fridge with a little saran wrap over the top and it'll keep. And I can pull it up tomorrow and warm it up. So I use this recipe not just for St. Patrick's Day, but also for Christmas, for Easter, for Thanksgiving. Okay. Now we're gonna go pop this guy in the oven. And that's our Coke Cannon Irish mashed potatoes. And you might think that's the end of the show. But wait, there's more. So to go with our mashed potatoes, we're gonna make an easy Reuben waffle witch. And it comes to us right from the Jack and Mo Cooking Show Waffle Witchcraft Cookbook. You can find on Amazon Kindle, or if you reach out to me, I can sell you a hard copy just like this one. Autographed. Autographed. By Miss Mo and myself. Okay, so now we're going to make an easy Reuben. And no matter how you look at it, easy or not, I love a good Reuben. Who doesn't? And we actually tested this recipe a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, Mike? Yes, we did. So what I've already done is I've already pre-buttered two slices of bread. And now I'm going to put in a little Thousand Island dressing. Hey Mike, guess what time it is? No, um, it's time for... Uh, it's time for Prophecies of a Single Parent. Oh, that one. Yeah, so previously on the Jack and Will Cooking Show, I've always wanted to say that, um, last time we kind of talked about making that big decision about what kind of a single parent you want to be. And for me, I spent a lot of time, and quite frankly a lot of money, and fought the system so that I could be a part of the parenting process with my daughter. All right, let's take a break from that for a second. Now what I have here are three slices of Swiss cheese and three slices of corned beef that we're gonna put right there on our bread. Okay, and we're gonna top it off with some sauerkraut. You like a lot of sauerkraut, Mike, or just a little? Um, kind of in between. Kind of in between. Okay, you say what? Just the perfect amount. Okay, so this is your sandwich. Then put one more scoop on. One more? Yeah, that's good. Okay, is that enough? Sure. Alright. We aim the please here at Jack and Moe's Cafe. You can get anything you want at Jack and Moe's Cafe. Alright, so now we're going to put that right in our waffle iron. Ooh, listen to that, Mike. That's Sounds good. Goodness, isn't it? It is. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to turn this a little so you can get a shot. 
Okay, so we made the, the decision that I wanted to be a big part of raising my daughter. And once we made that, once we got that achieved, and that was finalized, and Morgan was coming here quite a bit, we had to figure out a way to make this a home for her, not a place where she felt like she was visiting, but a place where she felt she could come, she could talk to me about anything, do anything, and she had everything she needed here to call it a home. So the first thing we did is we uh, set out to build her a wardrobe here so she didn't have to bring a suitcase. Because I didn't want her to have to pack, come here, unpack, go home, unpack again. So we, uh, we went out, we went to thrift stores, we went to garage sales, we went to stores in the mall, and we uh, bought her every single thing she would need. And we made it like a treasure hunt, kind of a scavenger hunt thing. We set out every day, every day we went out, we set out a different goal to find a different thing. And I would take her to the beauty salon, or I'd take her to the nail salon, and then we'd have some lunch and do some shopping, and it turned into a daddy-daughter day. So over the course of a few months, we built her a wardrobe. She had a whole closet full of clothes, a whole dresser full of clothes, and it made her feel more comfortable. Almost there, Mike. Is it? You want to get a shot? Yeah, just show them what it looks like. Yeah, almost there. It's fine, it smells good. And so, uh, so we built her a wardrobe, and when she came here, she came with the clothes on her back. And she had everything she needed for dress occasions, for casual occasions, for playing, anything she needed. And then we bought her a bunch of, we got her a bunch of books, games, puzzles, toys. We had some pets. We had like a little petting zoo here at one point. We had a rabbit, a cat, a hamster. We had a pool. We got our bicycle. So everything a kid could want or need for growing up happy, we had here for her. So that's the moral of the story. Do whatever you can to help your kids feel like they're at home and not a place they're visiting. And that is this week's Prophecies of a Single Parent. Good advice. Thank you, sir. Alrighty. Okay. This is always the trickiest part. So as you can guess, folks, our dinner tonight is going to be an easy room and a mashed potatoes. Okay. So now it's time for my sandwich. And I prefer smoked gouda to Swiss cheese. Actually, I got a, I almost forgot my Thousand Islands dressing. Don't forget about the potatoes. Oh, as soon as that timer goes off, All right. we will pull them out. Okay. And now I'm going to build my sandwich. And it's just rye bread, folks, right from the bakery section of the supermarket. The uh, Thousand Islands, right from the market. Sauerkraut, I guess you could make your own sauerkraut, but what about fast, easy, and expensive here? And that also takes about six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a long show, Mike. You know? Weekly series. Yeah. Making sauerkraut. With Jack and Mo. First show would be an hour, then the rest is just like yeah. two minutes of you checking it and stirring it. You know, <laughs> you brought up Guinness earlier. I used Guinness in my meatloaf, my Irish meatloaf. You know, we use all the regular ingredients, but then we put in ground um, corned beef and a cup of Guinness. Oh. And when Morgan was small, I didn't want to, I didn't want her mother to freak out with me giving her beer and her food. So instead, I used Coca-Cola, and it still tasted pretty good. So Mike, earlier uh, in the week, actually last Friday, I had an opportunity to do something really cool. Thanks to a gentleman named Matt Major and the Matt Major Show, which is a podcast on Twitch TV, Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., um, Matt did an interview with a gentleman named Troy Lockwood. And Troy originated the Community Fridge in Herkimer, New York. So it's this refrigerator that they parked in front of a uh, business in Herkimer on Main Street, and people can come and fill it with food 
and anyone who has a need for food, anyone who's down on their luck, they're having hard times, they can come by and take whatever they want. 24-7, 365. Now, unfortunately, three days after they opened the fridge, they had to relocate it. So now it's at 102 Church Street at the uh, Herkimer Reformer Church. But uh, we went in there and we filled it with everything you could think of. We put in canned goods, we put in cereal, we put in water, we put in applesauce, we put in frozen dinners, and within an hour or two it was all gone. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of near and dear to me because I grew up in poverty, I grew up in the projects, I grew up in Corn Hill, and I went to bed hungry more nights than I can count. So when, when Matt started doing this interview, it just hit me that we got to figure something out. So Matt organized a trip. Now he lived in Syracuse. He took all the way down from Syracuse and he picked up a whole bunch of donations. I made a bunch of breakfast burritos that we did a, we're going to post a video about real soon. And we just filled that thing. And I'm going to make it my mission to uh, try to do that on a regular basis. And they had one in Utica as well. However, that one had to relocate. So that's down for a little while. But as soon as they get a new place, that one's going to be back up and running. And I just think it's so important to, to help people, especially with food. You can't survive without it. And real soon we're going to be doing some virtual classes for clients in the Utica Food Pantry to show them how to use the, uh, the food they get from the food pantry. All right. Is yours done? We are done. Just gotta get it off this thing. Okay. Good. There we go. Nice. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my handy dandy kitchen scissors. And we're gonna cut along the dot of I could never cut along the dot of line, Mike. I was never very good at it in kindergarten. I still can't. And I always color outside the lines. That means you're an abstract thinker. Is that what that means? That uh, sounds good. To me. I think they have to assume that I think in the first place. Okay. I know the secret to cutting is to keep the scissors in one place and move the paper. Yeah. But I still can't cut. Kind of hard to do with a sandwich. You can hold the sandwich in one place. Are oh, you going to cut mine too? Would, would you want to cut or no? Sure. Okay. Hey, we'll pull the potatoes out here in a minute. All right. And we'll do a quick taste test. Hey, while you're um, cutting that, what do you think about it? Is it time for something else? Not quite. No? No, after we do the taste test. You want to do it after? Yeah. Ah. Uh, so we have a... That was just a reminder. Yeah. So we have a, you know, we started Prophecies of a Single Parent while we're starting another new segment this week called Food Joke of the Week. But I'm going to do it at the end because if I don't do it at the end, people might turn us off as soon as I say the joke. Strategic planning, Mike. Strategic. They have to sit through the whole show. <laughs> yummy, yummy, huh? All right. Okay, so we'll do the joke of the week now. Okay? Okay. So Mike, what's another name for instant potatoes? Uh, I don't know. Imitator. Baboon. Imitator. Imitator. Nice. Try to stick with the theme, you know? Yeah. Imitator. Hmm. Huh. Can you hand me your plate, Mike? Sort That's of. What I got. Maybe. I got 
Now we're going to taste test them. So there we go. We got Easy Reuben and Coal Cannon. All right. And there you go, Mike. Give it a try. Just like this bad boy down. Yep. And that is our dinner for tonight. <laughs> Oh, we should have made something for dessert, huh? Ah. Did the rest need dessert? Let's wrap like fruit. Oh, I do have some fruit. Mm. So what do you think of our easy Reuben? I like the Reuben. Mm-mm-mm. Terrestrially hot. Calm down for a second. <laughs> Creamy? Mm-hmm. Potatoes are really good too. Well there you go folks. Our easy Reuben and Coke potatoes. Happy cooking. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>